Well, the profits are really pouring out now. What I find interesting is that they might be seen as an, demonstrating the Indian summer of our resources boom because the big miners, the big resource groups are still making very handsome profits, but they are clearly at a lower level than they were at the peak of the boom. And the big question mark is where do they go from here? The, the single characteristic that comes through all these profits is, or the single characteristics, plural, is one, they're still pretty good. Fortescue, the third of our big three miners, iron ore miners, uh, had a more than 50% increase in its revenues and its profits as it surges in terms of increased production. And that's the second key characteristic. All of these are affecting very strong rises in production, which are largely offsetting, but not completely, the fall in the prices of the, that they receive, particularly for the dream commodities, iron ore and coal. So we saw BHP generate a profit, which was 50% greater than that of our biggest bank, the CBA, but not as good as it was earning a few years ago when it was making a profit equal almost to the entire profit of our banking system when the resources boom was really in full flight. So the question mark now becomes, okay, they're reaping the strong output volumes from all that resources investment, but that resources investment has now basically ended. We're unlikely to see another big major project initiated in Australia for the foreseeable future. Uh, and the, there's a big question mark over the price. Where does that go from here? Obviously, the key driver of that was going to be what happens in China. So right now, they're still making very strong profits, and they can be very grateful that they've increased their production and their sales. But there is a question mark going forward. The comments from Reserve Bank Governor Glenn Stevens at his twice a year uh, appearance before the Parliamentary Committee provides a very, very interesting additional input to this because Stevens was saying monetary policy can't revive the animal spirits out there. It's up to business to think about investing, to take those cheap interest rates, to take the, the uh, access to, to cheap debt capital and reinvest, go out and invest, go out and build, the, build more production going forward. But you look at the profits from the major resource groups and really, there's no particular reason why they should reinvest. BHP, after its demerger, will essentially become a utility company in large part. It'll be generating the profits from its existing projects. It'll be very cautious about going into new projects unless it can see a very, very clear upside, a very clear rate of return on that investment. And interestingly, as Stephen Bartholomew has explains on Business Spectator, it's going to be the other company, the spun-off the spun -off company, whether you call it Newco or Spinco, that will be likely to be embarking on the major reinvestments. But we're talking about a much smaller state of, a state, a, a, a quantum of investment in a company like that than we've seen in BHP Billiton, where new investments have been running at up to $20 billion a year. But so Stevens was saying he'd like to see companies go out and invest to take advantage of the, the low interest rates. But if you're running a company, you've got to think about whether you can generate sufficient returns to justify the investment. And a lot of corporate Australia is saying, no, we can't, so we're going to give the money back to shareholders. And we saw that again outside the resources sector with West Farmers, which paid out a dividend equal to nearly 100% of its profit, plus gave shareholders another $1 billion in new capital. And I think shareholders should be grateful that the board doesn't just feel it's got to invest for the sake of investing, for the sake of getting bigger. Finally, the BHP demerger. Uh, it should be a case of BHP showing that breaking up isn't hard to do, but the market reaction was unexpected, and I have to say pretty juvenile, when the share price was sold down initially in London, uh, and that was confirmed in Australia, because this is very much an exercise of a two plus two equals five character. Or in the case of BHP, it's probably, you probably describe it as 20 minus two equals 20 plus, the continuing BHP, and two plus the new company, both of which will be better vehicles as a consequence of the demerger. They'll both have clarity and focus, and most importantly for Newco, they'll be able to now actually get access to capital if they want to reinvest. When it's snuggled under the umbrella of BHP Billiton, where the focus is on iron ore, petroleum in particular, those two products, 
and looking forward maybe potash to attract new investment dollars the the company the, the businesses that are going into in a new co weren't able to get other than maintenance new investment maintenance capex so making separating the two companies gives you clarity and focus on bhp billiton the continuing company and it also enables the new co new co to have a much more cohesive business and to be a major player in the in the commodities in which it will be it will be operating